Hey guys, and uh, welcome to my first Python algorithms tutorial, where I'm going to be taking you guys through um, the selection sort algorithm, which is actually one of the worst sorting algorithms, but it's uh, an important basis uh, to have before we move on to the more advanced and uh, more efficient ones. So the first thing you'll notice is that I have this create file method above, and what this is going to do is pick out 10,000 different numbers and write them to our file. And they're going to be separated by a space so that we can parse them later on with the Python read lines method. So the idea in selection sort is to pick out the biggest element in the entire list and then place it at the beginning of our list and then check the rest of the list for the second biggest element and place that element in the second index of our list and then keep doing that until we filled out the entire list. So we're going to start off by iterating through each of the indices in our list with this counter variable i and for each of these uh, for each of these loops we're going to set the default biggest index to be that i and then do some comparisons with the rest of with all of the indices that come after. All right, so now I'll just take you through a live example of what this code would do. So we're going to start off. Um, here, let me just draw out a list. OK, so we're going to start off at index 0 and try and find the, um, the correct value for that. So we're going to set the default biggest to simply the value that sits there. And then we're going to loop through all of the remaining values. And if at any point one of these indices contains a value that's bigger than our current biggest, we're going to assign uh, that, that index to be the new biggest. So uh, we would go through 3, and 3 is not bigger than 6, so nothing happens. 5 is not bigger than 6. 7 is bigger than 6, so this line right here would set the new biggest to be uh, index 3. And then... Uh, the same would happen here. 8 is bigger than 7, so the, the current uh, new biggest index is 4. And then 3 is not bigger than 8. So um, once this loop uh, finishes, our uh, biggest would be 4, index 4. And then uh, once we're done the loop here, we uh, would swap the index that's uh, the biggest one with... Uh, the index that we were trying to find. So we were trying to find uh, what value to put at the beginning of our list, and we found uh, that to be 8. So we would swap 8 with the value that was previously there. And that's done in this method, but I'll explain that shortly. And then we would do the same thing uh, for the second index. So this code right here would finish, and we go back to our loop, and i would increment to, to 1. So now we'd be looking for the correct value to put here. And to do that, we would uh, compare uh, all of these elements. So then our loop down here would flip through all of these values and check if uh, check which index is the biggest. And then we would, um, well, the end result here would be that uh, 7 is the biggest amongst all of these. And so we would switch our current index with, um, with the biggest value that we found amongst these. So 7 would be swapped with 3. And then we would, this process would just continue for each index in the array. And we would finish with our sorted list. All right, so now I'll just take you guys through this swap indices method. As you can see, it takes a list and two indices to swap. This first line right here is just going to store the value that's, uh, that's at the first index. And the reason we need to do that is because we want to overwrite the value at the first index with the value of the second index. Um, but then we would lose access to what was previously there. So we're just going to store that in a temporary variable for now. And, uh, and then we can assign the first index in the list to... Um, to value at our second index, and then assign the value at our second index to the uh, to the temporary variable, which uh, which still holds the old value at index one. 
And so with that, we've successfully uh, swapped the values at these two indices in our list. So let's jump down to the code that actually executes all this. So here we create the file. Here we assign my nums to a list of, uh, of every one of the numbers in our file. And, uh, and here we assign another list to the result of applying selection sort on, um, on the list of numbers in the file. And then we, uh, we just run a quick test. We print out uh, the length of the sorted numbers to make sure that our final list actually contains all of them. And we're going to print out uh, the first hundred numbers here. And we want them separated by a space just uh, so that it looks decent. So let's, uh, let's run this. And this will actually take a minute because this algorithm is rather slow. So it's running. And let me take you down so you can see the output. So here is our output. As you can see, uh, our output printed out uh, a number that was that's equal to the length of our list, which is good because this means that our sorted list has the same number of elements that we started with. So um, we're good to go on that. Um, now we got to check that this is in fact sorted. So if we look at the first hundred elements and you just eyeball it, it's pretty easy to see that uh, that this list is in fact sorted. You can check for yourself if you don't believe me. A last thing which I want to show you guys is how to do uh, analysis on any any kind of algorithm or program that you have in Python. So if you notice that a program is running really slow and you want to figure out how to fix it, um, I'll show you how to do so right now. So what I'd like you to do is open up Command Prompt. And the way you do that on Windows is you um, click Run here, and then you launch CMD. OK, now um, once you've got that open, um, here if you, I just want to show you a few things. You can change directories with the CD command. So if you want to go into a previous directory, you do CD dot dot. So I just moved out of my Lucas directory, CD dot dot again. And then to list all the directories, you can you uh, type dir. OK, so I happen to know where my Python script is, so I'm just going to change into that. Well, if you um, if you press uh, tab after completing a certain number of letters, it will auto complete for you. So it makes things very very quick. Uh, so I just press L for instance. I press oh whoops. I'm gonna need L U, and then I press tab. Uh, it auto completes it for me. Okay. So just cd into the directory where your Python script is located. All right. As you can see, I'm in the directory where um, where my file is located, and now I'm going to run a command, which is extremely useful for analyzing Python programs. So the way you do this command is you type python m, and then uh, the next parameter is going to be something that's called c profile. And then you want to add the name of the file that uh, that you want to analyze. And this is going to run the program and do some analysis on it. So let's have a look at what it returns. This is going to take a minute again because, uh, because this algorithm is pretty slow. So let's look at what this returned. OK, so there's our output. We're not so interested in that. We're more interested in what took up time. So as you can see here, um, there's, a, there's a column called uh, total time, tot time. And, uh, and each row represents uh, a certain um, method call. So these things took almost no time. Um, but what, uh, what took almost all of the time was um, this selection sort uh, method call. Um, this is going to be really useful um, in the next video when I show you guys how much better uh, merge sort is than this selection sort algorithm. And we'll be comparing them uh, 
by using the C pro profile uh, option. All right, so that concludes my tutorial on selection sort. I hope to see you guys in the next video where we're going to compare this to the famous merge sort algorithm.